Hi guys, welcome to lecture one on unit five evolution. And uh, what you're looking at is an artist's illustration of um, Lucy. Lucy is, uh, <clears throat> scientific name is Australopithecus afarensis. She's from the Afar region of Ethiopia. And she was walking around out there a couple million years ago, two, three million years ago. And the Australopithecines existed up until relatively recent times. I think they're finding uh, skeletal remains that indicate that they were uh, they co-present. Co co they were in the same ecosystems with um, our other hominid relatives, other homos, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, up to about half a million years ago. So Lucy and her her offspring were around for a long time. Lucy's our first hominid. She's the first um, bipedal ape. So she had a brain about the size of a chimp and she could walk with you know, matter that was considered fully or partially bipedal. So she was up walking around. I think there's some tools associated with her skeletons as well, but uh, there you go. There's your great, 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 great grandma. And uh, of course, that's one of the things that makes evolution so fascinating. In this unit, we're going to look at um, that question: Are we still evolving? You know, one of the things that's true about evolution is that it's um, dependent upon the environment. The environment selects those that are more fit, and so have we mitigated the effects of the environment? And of course, you can look around today with the COVID nineteen epidemic and say, like, no, we have not. The environment still selects those people that have advantages. Um, we're going to look at uh, how evolution is related to the process of mutation. We just finished mutations as our, as our unit. And uh, we'll look at the question of why evolution is, is called the theory of evolution and not a law. And then last but not least, of course, we're going to start talking about Charles Darwin. Uh, but before we do, we look here. This is, a, this is the Columbian mammoth. And I know it looks kind of like an African elephant, except for those tusks. They can be as long as 15 feet. In fact, if you look at the, the diagram here, you'll see that this guy's standing about four meters at the shoulder. Um, these, these things were as, as tall as, as 15, 16 feet high, which is way bigger than an African bull elephant. And I've got an animal evolution project set up for you guys. And I'll post that uh, probably today so you can get a look at it and take a running start at it. It's one of my favorite projects uh, uh, for the year. And uh, so uh, I'll post that and you can start thinking about what which organism you'd like to learn about. So are humans still evolving? Well, Charles Darwin thought so. And he's the father of modern evolutionary thought. Um, what, and one of the intrinsic or primary ideas that were so important about the way he thought and how his theory of evolution differs from other theories of evolution was the fact that mutation, normal random mutation, what was, was the phenomenon that was driving evolution. Uh, and that's, that's a little bit different, difficult to see in, in its, uh, cl have clarity about it. So the truth is humans are still evolving. And uh, you can see here, here's a picture from my high school yearbook. That was, that was me in 1980. Um, you know, long hair was in back then. I'm just kidding. From a biological perspective, individuals cannot evolve, but species can. So if you remember back in the day, we started talking about the seven characteristics of life. One of the characteristics was the response and uh, a species response to the environment, but it's the change called evolution. Individuals respond through behaviors. Um, now, evolution is a theory, but it may be the most important scientific theory of all, just because it has such broad implications over so many fields. And you know, remember that theories are, are scientific principles, or they uh, represents a level of scientific certainty that brings in lots and lots of information. Uh, from all kinds of different fields. And, you know, I gotta read more about this. I don't know why evolution is not a law. There's a lot of evidence to support it. 
<clears throat> so uh, Darwin's theory about evolution was pretty much dead on. There's a couple things that he got wrong, but that's okay. Look, he was around a long time ago. And of course, one of the things that's important to understand about Darwin is the context that he arose in. So uh, where was Darwin from? Well, he was from, he was from uh, 19th century England. And that's important for all of us to think about um, our context, right? So when we think about the, the evolution of science as a, as a type of thought, we've got to consider where we came from. And where we've come from is what we call the Western tradition. So the Western tradition arises from ancient Greece. Ancient Greece, um, you know, ancient Greece was uh, at the pinnacle of civilization 3,000 years ago, more or less, at least when it comes to our, our basis for our philosophical positions. And uh, um, one of the truths about the Western tradition is that uh, as this tradition went in, became the Roman Empire, and then later those uh, empires in, in Europe, um, by the time we get to Darwin, uh, for, for many of the biggest answers, for answers for the biggest questions in the world, like where do we come from and, you know, what, is, what does it mean to be alive and who is man and, you know, the answers were coming from the church. And, and prior to the Anglican Church, which is Darwin was a member of, and he actually was went to Oxford to study theology. Uh, he was it was part of the Roman Catholic tradition, and of course the Christian traditions, the Catholic traditions, are are based on the Jewish tradition, the, the Old Testament, uh, and, and this is also true for for the modern Muslim religion. So uh, the Western Western civilization is. Um, not based in, but in the context of Christian, Judeo, the Judeo-Christian Muslim tradition now, which looks to the Bible for big answers. And so uh, the big answer of where life came from uh, is written down in Genesis. And in Genesis, um, it's a great story. It's, it's, you know, God said, let there be light. And out of the darkness, you came the earth and the oceans and the animals and man and and that was that was it. That was the law, and um, so Darwin and and those scientists that preceded him were um, were um, were brave because challenging the dogma, the teachings of the church when it came to even scientific ideas was pretty dangerous. And so some of the questions that that plagued Darwin, and as I said, he he was studying theology. He was a very religious guy. In fact, his religious thinking permeated his writings right through the origin of species. And, uh, and so some of the questions were like in the, in, in, in the Bible was interpreted to say that like God created everything perfectly. And if that was the case, then why is it, why is a, a frog here in, in England different from a frog you'd find in Morocco? Um, and if, um, if all the species God created independently, why do they all kind of look the same? Why do they all have the same body plan? Um, so, so these these challenges that arose, and, and like I said, Darwin studied theology in college, and uh, this informed his thinking as he went forward, and this informed his ideas about about the nature of evolution, frankly. <clears throat> Anyway, Darwin went to college um, to study theology, and he got interested in biology. And uh, like all cool biologists, uh, he was an adventurer. And uh, he wasn't a great student. And so I think he was even flunking out. I think he flunked out of medical school. He, he, his dad was a doctor, and Charles Darwin didn't like blood. In fact, he was really interested in a lot of different things. So geology for one thing. In fact, he made friends with a guy named Charles Lyell, who we'll talk about later. But his dad, when he when he finally did graduate from school, he knew he wasn't going to be a doctor. His dad got him a job as a naturalist on the HMS Beagle. And of course, the Beagle was a, a British ship in the British Navy. And of course, the, the British Empire dominated the, the 19th century seas and the 
the job of the Beagle was um, cartography, and cartography is map making. And so the Beagle sailed for five years around the Earth. They went around the planet, and uh, their first job was to make uh, detailed maps of the coast of South America. And so that's where a lot of Darwin's ideas um, germinated from. So they left in 1831, returned in 1836, and Darwin saw a lot of cool stuff. There's a picture of him as a young man. There's the Beagle. And uh, let's talk about some of those things that informed his thinking. So he saw lots of different things. His job as a naturalist was to collect um, specimens um, just for the pursuit of science, but also for commercial values, right? So like we found a really cool animal you could, or plant you could use, like the banana or the breadfruit tree, you could uh, make money off of it. So they were there to make maps. They were there to exploit natural resources. And while they're there, Darwin saw some cool stuff. One of the things he saw initially was that um, he went into a village and he saw that the uh, some of the huts were capped with what were obviously the remains of animals, these huge armor-plated carapace is the word. A carapace is a, a covering, so on, on top of a tortoise shell, you could say that shell is a carapace. So there were these huge carapaces. <clears throat> Unlike anything Darwin had seen before, no, no animals known, so he asked the villagers, where did you get it? And they said, well, it's buried in the ground. And uh, and so he went and he, he dug up these these fossil carapaces from an organism we call Glyptodon now. A um, couple things. Um, Darwin's, uh, the captain of the Beagle, F Captain Fitzroy, was a very devout man. And he liked the idea of Darwin collecting um, this these species. Darwin was looking for centers of creation. I'm not so sure that's not a code word for the Garden of Eden. But places where creation, where the new organisms were created. Um, and they also, and his captain Fitzroy, when he found out that he found these like ancient creatures that were buried in the mud, he said, well, this is evidence for the biblical account of the flood. So you get these creatures that are disappeared. Maybe these are the wicked creatures God destroyed in the flood. And if you read the story of Noah in the ark, you'll know what I'm talking about. So anyway, Darwin found these, these glyptodon carapaces, and while he was looking at them, he noticed that they looked a lot like modern armadillos, except they were giant. Another thing that happened to Darwin was off the coast of uh, Chile was a, uh, they were there when there was a huge, an 8.5 magnitude earthquake. And Darwin um, said that he, he could keep his footing, but it made him feel giddy. And there were, you know, there's waves um, through the through the solid surface. And it made him think about the possibility that the Earth's rigid surface was floating on a liquid magma core, which is exactly what we realize today. And, and Darwin wrote about that later in his life as well. But one of the things that had happened was he had been looking at these uh, marine species, these shells that were um, at the coastline the day before. And when he went back out to look at those shells again, the, he could see that the sea uh, floor had risen by three feet and these shells were hanging high and dry out of the water. And in fact, as he looked up the ridge of that coast, he found more and more shells. He rode his horse into the mountains, 13,000 feet above sea level, and, uh, and he found seashells up there. And this made him think about geological time. Now, in the 1800s, uh, 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 one of the ideas was that was important that, that was difficult for Darwin to understand was or comprehend or take in was the age of the earth. And there was a famous bishop, Bishop Usher, who had gone back into the Bible and tried to date, given an age of the earth. And if you ever read the Bible, um, you'll see that there's a long history. In fact, if you ever ask somebody from a prehistorical culture, just where you have an oral tradition, you know, like primitive peoples. If you say, who are you? They'll give you a long list of the names of their ancestors. And the same thing's true in the Bible. So they have Adam beget Saul and Saul beget Esau and Esau beget, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, Bishop Usher went into the Bible and he said that by looking at the different ancestors, he could date the world to like 5,736 years old. And it was created May 1st. I forget what the date is. Darwin didn't agree with that. 